Hello guys, welcome back to yet another Base Blaster Audio Tech YouTube channel video. And in this video, I wouldn't say it's a repair because it works, kind of, sometimes, if you hit it at the right angle. This is the old room heater, egg fryer, fire hazard, Sansui A1100, DC servo amplifier. Now a DC servo amplifier is a little different than a normal, like, just basic, you know, push-pull. I don't know the exact, because I don't really understand it exactly. But, um, this just needs a little bit of work. Probably almost three years ago, I did rebuild this thing, because I got it and it didn't work. Let me show you what the output transistor looked like, because I kept it. Now, it did use Sankin outputs. They got so hot, it actually broke. I got the other part in here. There you go. My exposure's locked, so it's a little bright, but yeah. They got so extremely hot, they just actually, literally, broke at the legs. <clears throat> now, this amp, this is from the 80s. This is when Sansui, for lack of a better term, went the black plastic crap. Because this amp, if you pick it up, you can literally twist it. You can twist it, and if you take... The top and bottom covers off. Yeah, this still has a service panel. The whole amp can be twisted by like half an inch. It's just plastic. It's all held together. Like the sides, the boards clip to them are plastic. Front, plastic. The back, top and bottom is the only thing that's metal. Got a real nice transformer. A 47 volt. So 47, 0, 47. Why this thing is a fire hazard? Um... I can describe that a little bit better if we get the bottom off. Then I can get a little techie with it. Now, while I'm flipping it around here, the little intro clip, uh, those were not on my test speakers because they're 4 ohms. I ran the wires from my back wall to my big floor standing speakers. But I'll also get to why I did that in a second. I just, you guys should know, most amps of these types, they're not 4 ohm stable. This amp is barely 8 ohm stable. If you put a 4 ohm load to it, it'll catch on fire. When we flip it over, you'll get to see why. I've not been inside this thing in a couple years, but I... It took two, two separate Mauser orders to get this thing back under control. And so this is our main board right here. This is our power supply, protection, and amplifier. Why this thing is... Okay, very, very brief rundown on why a lot of amps are not 4 ohm stable. It's not necessarily because the output devices can't handle the current. The problem is, is the heat dissipation. What happens is, let's say you have a 60 volt rail. This is higher than that, by the way. It's about 70 volts. Um, you run a 4 ohm load, you know, you have less resistance. So it takes less voltage to get X amount of current to flow. Well, that voltage going in and lower voltage coming out with the high current, that voltage has to be dropped somehow. And normal BJT transistors are essentially a variable resistor. Imagine them as a very large potentiometer you are turning at thousands of times a second. That's essentially what a BJT is. A MOSFET's more like a switch. It's on or off. If you ever play with a linear regulator, let's say you got a 12 volt regulator and you're drawing two amps, but you got like 25, 30 volts going into it, gobs of heat. The same thing happens with these. So when you put a 4 ohm load on them, especially if they're on a high supply voltage, the transistors, they simply just can't dissipate the heat required to drop that voltage down by that much, but to also pass that much current. There's a formula for it. I found it. The formula is voltage drop times output current. Okay, so let's say we're putting out 100 watts into 4 ohms on this amp. That's going to be 5 amps of output. The voltage is going to be 20. This has 70 volt rails. So we do 70 minus 20, that gives us 50. So we get our 50 volt drop times by five amps of output. That's 250 watts of heat per transistor. That's why a lot of amps will not appreciate it if you give them a four ohm load. Now let's say this had a 30 volt rail then it'd be perfectly acceptable. Actually, just for shits and gigs, let's see that. So that's only going to be a 10 volt drop. So that's only going to be 50 watts of heat per transistor. I can do that in my head. We're getting off topic. 
you can tell Sansui was price cutting with this amplifier because it's got a wee, wee tiny heat sink. And in an attempt to get even more heat away from the factory ones, they clamped on a bracket to the front of the transistors, which is heat gunked to the back metal of the chassis. On top of that, this has a six blade metal DC fan in it. But of course, it only comes on when the amplifier hits like 120 degrees Celsius and then it shuts the relay off and it actually has a buzzer. It beeps at you, this thing. Now, I would pop this off to show you the new transistors, but I know what they are. They're the 2SC5200 and 2SA1943, but they're in the TO3P package. It's the same die as the big boys, but in a smaller package. But this is still warm. It's been off now for probably 10 minutes, about, since that intro clip. Yeah, it's unbelievable. So the issues this amp has are minor. My muting switch is scratchy, my volume is scratchy, and the light that indicates that lights the slider up doesn't work. And this whole front screen lights up and it doesn't work either. But if you hold your tongue at the right angle and bang it, it will come on. So I'm thinking it's either bad ball, bad solder joint, bad wire. This is quite an interesting amplifier design. Let me hop back in my chair here. Oh God, it's full of, it's full, it's full of spooter webs. It wasn't last time I was in here. Yeah, this is still warm. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Just do a quick handheld. We have a, a pre-driver, if that makes sense. And as you see, I had to replace a couple resistors that burnt up. Um, what can, I'll use a pencil. Let's see, these ones here are new. The other ones, these matte blue looking ones, they're the original. Focus. These green caps are Nijicon ES. The originals were bipolar. Kind of cool. The green looks nice. Um, new trimmers, because I believe this one went up in smoke. That's why these resistors have been replaced. But this is the signal that comes in from the front. Then it feeds into a Jelly Bean 4558D op amp. Then it goes into this. Then it goes into an STK, which is not on a heatsink, and you best believe it gets extremely hot. It's an STK 3102 Mark II. Now, this is an STK that I sat on a form, and I actually made a drop-in replacement because I thought that one was the issue. If I can find the board, I'll show you. If not, I'll just put over overlay the video, the PCB design, and a photo of the built one I know I put online. But it's actually a drop-in discrete replacement for those. That goes into a pair of drivers, TO220s. They've been replaced, which goes into the finals, which were also replaced. Pretty much had a complete failure. I don't know why I fixed it. This thing isn't really worth that. You can see the board is separated. That's our protection board. And listen, it beeps at you. Then we change inputs. Pretty cool. This thing also has a seven amp AC fuse. And I did get the pleasure of watching it completely vaporize, I think twice, before I figured out that somehow one of the mica insulators on one of the transistors, I think the one that broke, broke, and it was shorting one of the supply, ra supply rails directly to ground. Exciting that those were replaced too, obviously. You see, this amp has really been a piece of work. It's not worth it. It's 80s black plastic crap. This is black. This thing doesn't really even sound that good, honestly. But it's cool. I'll try to pop the front off, get the boards out, and shoot some cleaner in these switches. I don't remember how the front comes off this thing. I know it just snaps together, but I don't remember where the snaps are. And the circuit board is also held in by snaps, so you gotta make sure you don't break those off or you're not gonna have a very good day. I remember, I see how they are. I need a flathead screwdriver. I gotta pry it apart. I don't trust this, so I'm unplugging it. Even though it is the old school, switch as the uh, mains cord. Yep, just like that, out it comes. 
Now this side's clips are behind the speaker switch power board and I don't know how to get to them. Ah! That didn't sound good. Actually, I could get this board out from here. So I'm gonna do that. Well, that was easier than I thought it would have been. Here's our op amp for our loudness and muting. It's probably all in that same little setup there. My deoxid spray covered in dust. Well, I don't see a clear opening, but I'm just going to try to squirt some in here. Oh, yeah, there we go. I see it oozing out. Quick bit in this quick bit in this volume slider. That should do it. Try to drop you back in here. is isn't that hard, you just kind of got to line it up. Okay, that was actually a lot easier than I was anticipating it. I believe this big main board's going to have to come out because that's where the lights are that light up the slider in the face. I don't know if they're burnt out because sometimes they work. How does this front come out? And it's the same way. I can bring up the top and just lift it out. I think the transformers are warm in this thing. Cool. Hope the camera caught that. Got to take the sliders off. And there's no connectors. This is all, all these wires are soldered in. Make sure you don't get dust on that. That's one of those matte finishes and it will fingerprint. None of these cables are held in with connectors. They're all soldered in. This is going to be a major pain. If I can get the face completely off, it wouldn't be as bad. Don't worry, I see it. I just got to stick my screwdriver in there and uh, pry it out. It only took one of these high-powered flashlights to be able to see it. Okay. And there's our face off. I go back in, I'll turn it on and just measure voltage, see if I have voltage at the bulb. God, the light's dim. We have 0.8 volts. 0.08. That makes me think we have a resistor somewhere that's went high. This thing scares me whenever I work on it. Look at this. 70 volts. 70 on our collectors. Look, okay, I shut it off. Here, click. Look at this. Still sitting high. It'll eventually fall to about half a volt. So to try to help me get to the board better, I'm going to take off these blast plastic, plastic supports. You just take one screw out and you slide it down, kind of. Now they're a little stuck. Yeah, down. And then it just comes off. I poked around. The lights are powered by this harness. I tested the lights, like ohm, ohm metered them from the lights to here, and I have continuity on all three posts. One post gives me a pretty much a short, which you should have, but the other two give me like 35 ohms. And I, I don't know how the circuit works, because the schematic, I can't even find the, this in the schematic, because the schematic for this is horrible. It just has parts that just straight up aren't there. More on this rubbish schematic. I ohm tested both the bulbs, and I think the bulbs are actually the 35-ish ohm load. But the connector on our main board is numbered wire 29, 30, and 31. So I'm rummaging the schematic trying to find wire 29, 30, and 31, and see if maybe if it's in link with a, a, a resistor or a transistor, like a little driver somewhere. It's just two bulbs, but the whole front of it's dead because neither of them work. Part in the handheld, I didn't have time to paint it or build it to scale. But here in this schematic, I found it. 29, 31, and th no, backwards, but the experiment I should have 12 volts here. And I need to find these resistors. Because I was measuring the bulbs and it didn't make an awful lot of sense. But how it works is apparently each end has its own resistor, I guess. And then they have a I assume that's a ground, I believe it is. See, Sansui, the way they do their schematics is their signal path has this real big thick black arrow. And you can follow it all the way through. Here it comes out of that STK driver. That funky board's got those green Nijicon caps on it. 
Uh, then it goes through. I believe this. This has it's got two drivers. You have this SDK, which is a driver. But then it goes through the TO220s, which then feeds the bases of the final. So it's got two drivers, and I'm not sure what that's about. But where did I go? I lost myself. Shite. Yeah. So this part here is what I need to be finding. Oh, what's that? ML05. I need to... Yeah, we should have 12 volts. We don't have that. I need to find these two. MR1 and MR9. Okay, I believe I found it right here by this connector. Let's try to focus. Let's digital zoom a little bit. Whoa, that's a bit much. Toothbrush, I dropped it. This is R9. This is R1. This one I can see is stamped 33 ohm. This one I can't see. I bet you, because these are those um, metal oxide fusible resistors. I've seen these fail before firsthand. That down there a Fisher RS-881A had the exact same issue. One of those metal oxide fusibles, what they're called, resistors, that feeds the supply voltage of the digital input switching chip, that's a mouthful, went high to like 1.3 meg, and I had no sound. It took like two months to find it. Well, I know a little better today. So, I'm going to flip it over. We're going to drop those resistors out, and we're going to measure them. I believe I got some 33 ohms. Another thought that just occurred to me, since each light has its own resistor and both the lights are out, I wonder if the issue is before the resistor. So I'm going to measure on both sides of the resistor, turn the unit on, and see what I get. Get my meter, try to get it in shot where it can be seen. Okay. First, I want to do an ohms check, see if I have ground. So according to this, pin 30, which is the one in the middle, is ground. So that means if I just stick this somewhere, and I poke the center pin, I should get just about a complete short. Which I do. Oh hell, it's right by the transformer too. Or the winding connections. Well, I get done complaining about it. Nothing on that side, nor that side, or that side, or that side. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Is this AC or DC? That I don't know. Huh, I never thought of that. That could work very well be an AC light driven right from the transformer. I looked at the schematic. I'm pretty sure it's AC. It comes right off the 16 volt winding. So let's try this again. Yeah, uh huh? Okay, so that's the side that goes to the transformer. What do we have on this side? We have the same. Probably not to flip it back over. No, I think I poke it in. I'm gonna continuity check and see if I don't have a break in the wire. Not very common, but I mean, I suppose it could happen. No. Yeah, our wire is fine. Are the lights actually burning out? Because I remember when I was when I had this amp in my rotation a couple years ago when I first fixed it, the lights came on. All of them did. And then they went back out after before I banged my chair against my desk. And they all went back out. Either the lights are no good or there's an actual break somewhere. You know, I take that back. All these cables do come out. They're just in those funky connectors. The only one that's a proper connector is this one, which goes to the driver board. Well, I guess now I'm just going to turn it back on and see if I have voltage at the lights. I, just, I can't believe it. All this time, I've had this thing for years, years and years. And I never thought, hey, dumbass, they're probably AC bulbs. I'm going to truth. What do I get on my bulbs? Okay, nothing on that side. Nothing on that side. There's got to be a break somewhere. Okay, let me test right at the wires. Okay, so I have the voltage at the end of the wire. So it's breaking somewhere before it gets to the light. Somewhere in this circuit, it's got to be a broken trace. Turn it back on, I can test for voltage at the other bulb, which is out of the frame. But I do have it on that one. 
So I think that one might be the one that's... Maybe that one is actually burnt out. So having this board lay flat where I can easily get to was as simple as disconnecting the input to this driver of the driver. Now there's plenty of slack in the wire that it just lays here. Don't turn it on with this unplugged because for some reason the speaker relay will fail to engage. And that makes me believe that if that's unplugged, the output goes into full oscillation. But uh, this one bulb here, it's it's got to be blown. Because I traced the circuit out. Let me shut this off so I can unplug this safely. Okay, so on this bulb, this uh, fill here is ground. This fill is our positive. I continuity tested. I have 16 volts here, and I have continuity from here to ground. That bulb must just be burnt out. Now, the bulb on the other side uses the same ground, and then its plus 16 volts comes from the yellow wire of this cable, which I've yet to voltage test. So let's plug this back in because I don't like the idea of high current capable devices in full oscillation. Uh, off camera I tested those two blue resistors and uh, they both read about 34 ohms so they're fine. Lights dim every time. Uh, this bulb, we got it. And this one over here, we also have it. So yeah, both the bulbs are no good. I think I'm set. These are just uh, normal cool white 5 millimeter bulbs. Right, so we have 16 or 17 volts AC unloaded from the transformer. AC is an RMS. To find your peak to peak, which will be DC, is your AC and you multiply it by 1.414. That's going to give us about 24 volts peak to peak. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply cut the two AC lines on this harness going to the front. Then I'm going to put in a diode to rectify it. Then I uh, did some math. It says for a 3 volt LED drawing 20 milliamps, 1200 ohm resistor should work. Um, because I'm not certain what my Chinese LEDs draw because they were never listed, um, I think I'm going to look for about a 1500. I believe I got a 1500 ohm. What diodes do I want? 4148s or the 4004s? I feel bad because when I ordered these, I wanted to get them on a reel. I ordered them from Mauser. I got a hundred of them, all individual. So someone probably had to sit there and pick out a hundred of these, or pick them off the reel. Now I got a hundred forty, uh, four thousand fours, and they came on a reel, but these didn't. Cut tape. My bad. Not reel. It's called cut tape. You get a reel at like five thousand quantity. Quantity one hundred. Where is it at? Somewhere through there. One in forty one forty eight. Now I need to go to my drawers. Where I have all my resistors sorted. Okay, so there's 1.2K, 1K5, which will be 1500. You're close enough, and you're a little lower, but you're fine. Okay. So, how I'm going to do this is I'm just going to go right in the middle and um, cut the outside, put my diode in series with the resistor link them in, and then cover it up. Which means I'll have to get out some heat shrink and remember to actually put it on before I solder it together. A little hard to see, but you can see how I'm just going to twist the leads together and solder them and snip them. Just to try to keep it all like as least intrusive as possible, I guess. Now at a different color temperature, you can see just soldered them and snipped the leads. And because they're diodes, I of course have to pay attention to which way I connect them. You can see how I'm going to splice it in there. I run some heat shrink over the end of it, solder this end down, cut the extra length off, shrink it, then repeat on that side. Then it should be LED ready. Just like that, then I'll slide this heat shrink down over it so it covers most of the wire. Oh, I gotta cut that little bit off. Then I'll shrink it, do that to the other side, and that'll be done. So you can see since my pieces of heat shrink weren't quite long enough, um, I stagger them. So even though one side's going to be exposed, it won't possibly touch the other. 
then I'm going to put a bigger piece of heat shrink over all of this so it's just one big kind of blob. And I made sure that the diodes were facing that way towards the board. Autofocus help me. That way um, the diode just won't block everything. Because in the schematic, this is the AC straight off the transformer. It's not rectified before it goes to the bulbs. And I just did a nice shot of me heat shrinking that with the heat gun, and I forgot to press record. Well, next I'm going to try to get these uh, old lights out of here. This is a single-sided board, so this pump usually works pretty well. I know on those double-sided boards, like most of the stuff I fuck with, they're pretty much just about the definition of useless. Yeah, that's going to be difficult because that plastic thing is in the way, and I don't want to melt it. Never mind, that plastic thing is the socket for the light. I thought it was this uh, little black piece by the power meters. No. I know what I need for this. I need to change the tip on my iron. I'm using my fat wedge tip. I need my conical tip. And since this tip is hot enough to melt, um, I'm going to take it out and I'm going to set it on the heat sink. There we go. Now, I'm going to try to be very careful with the plastic spacer because I want the LED to be in the same spot because the light's obviously elevated from the board for a reason. Probably for better light. But I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do about the LED's directional nature of light. A little trick you can do that helps them is to get sandpaper and sand your LED. That actually works really well. And uh, it's out. Just got to get it out and out she came okay so multiple things I'm seeing here I was worried that this bulb had a blue hat on it I guess but look the hat just comes off so I can just stick it on the new light see if I can get this cap off Christ it's sure on there tight it's almost like they glued the damn thing and I ripped it yeah, this bulb's blown out, but I fucking destroyed the little cap on it, so I'm going to lose that blue light this thing had. That makes me mad. And so here I got the bulb in its little riser. Now, I got to make note the positive negative leave for when I put it back in the board to, of course, make sure I don't put it back backwards. Push the holder in, which I just broke too. Jesus Christ. I figure that holder's brittle because it's been baked by that bulb for... Who knows how long before it burn out. I know I had it when it burned out because I've seen this thing light up. It was a nice pretty green. Now I believe I can um, turn it on and plug that harness back in and see if our light goes kabloom. It shouldn't. So we're going to get our light harness which plugged in right there. Yellow to the right. Then we got to plug in this our audio input or for some reason the protection relay won't dis or won't engage okay so we killed one light just turn it on okay let's plug it in let's turn it on oh look at that and our relay clicked so, ooh I could have used a lower resistor. It's pretty dim. Mm. Okay, let's get that other one out. As you can see, kind of, it's got a holder, but the bottom of the bulb is broken. I don't know what happened to him. Got the other bulb out. This is the one that lights up the slider volume. That's blown too, and the holder for it is completely busted. I guess that one really got baked from heat. Because I looked at it before I took it out and it was broken too. But there's still enough of it left that I can have the LED set up at a level. And it being an LED might not be a problem. Because for the front, the bulb sits in one of these diffusers. And same for the volume slider. But you can see it has completely focus. It's completely melted the end of the diffuser. Um, see, I'm not sure about that. Let's plug this in. And turn on, see if anything goes kaboom. Nope. We light up all nice. Oh, I think we can turn one light back on. That one there. And that one on the side. Yeah, I could have maybe 
one with a lower resistor value because they are pretty dim. But I think, actually I don't think, I'm. it's time to put her back together. Oh, I figure I can go ahead and clean it before I stick it back on. Which I think that's what I plan to do anyway, but then proceeded to spend almost three hours fucking with it. A little bit. This stuff's got a very high mix of soap in it. I got a little excited with it. I tell you, I wish it wasn't so damn dusty in my house, and I could actually keep stuff looking nice around here. Okay, so it goes back together pretty simple, actually. It just snaps, as we all know. Plug the audio back in. First time powered on, put the face on. Kill that light. Okay. Ooh. It's a nice pretty blue. Oh man. Yeah, the slider's really dim. Really dim, but I can see it. Cool. It lights up again. Now, if I really wanted to, I could cut that heat shrink, which I definitely don't want to do. And I could put a lower value resistor in it to make that slider brighter. But I think it's fine. The only reason it's not bright because it's coming... I, I should have sanded it. That's what I did. I should have sanded the top. Then it would disperse the light more to the sides. Oh, that's why. I was trying to get the speaker switches to line up, and I couldn't, and I forgot. I popped that board out. Now they fit right in. There's that side snapped in. There's that side. And it is now struck. Okay. It is now structurally solid again. It's late at night, so I can't do it too loud, but let's hook the speakers up to it and put on some more copyright free music even though what I played at the very start of the video was not copyright free Shh, don't tell anyone display sure looks nice in the dark. I'm going to go ahead and pop the, the uh, two panels back on and this one will be complete. Oh god damn it. I just realized something. I need to put that support back on the bottom of the circuit board. Oh, where'd the screw for it go? Found it. So I'd say this little bracket is quite important because the whole board would just... This board is only attached in the back. Because the whole front of the board has nothing. So these brackets are very important or the board could probably just snap off. Well guys, there you have it. That, that is a Sansui A1100 integrated DC servo amplifier. Changing the lights in the front. It is 10 o'clock at night and I've been at this since about 4. I guess you can say I take my time, but I think the better word is I get very easily sidetracked. But this is one of the few projects I've actually gotten done in a day. So, if you guys enjoyed the video, as always, you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye for now.